If you want to be able to take a random sample, let's say of a range of data, you can use the sampling feature. Now the sampling feature only works on cells that contain numbers, not text. So for example, if I want to be able to do a random drawing for my employees to send two of them to Hawaii, then I want to use the sampling feature, which by default isn't installed anywhere on the ribbon, so we have to install it as an add-in, which if you recall in the previous training video, we learned how to do that by coming up here, clicking on the File tab, going down to Options, clicking on the Add-ins tab, coming down here and clicking on Go, and then checking the box, the Analysis Tool Pack, click OK, and once you do that, it's going to add the Analysis Group over here on the Data tab, and there's Data Analysis. Click on it, it opens up, you get a bunch of analyses here, we're going to use sampling, click OK, and then it says, OK, what's the input range that you want to sample? As long as my cursor is flashing in that field, I can just go ahead and click and drag and select it. Pops it back open. It says, OK, do you have any labels that you want to include? I don't want to include the ID label above it or if I had any labels to the left of it, so I'll skip it. Then it says, OK, of the sampling method, how many samples do you want to take? I want to do two. Now, this is faulty, this uh, sampling feature, because when it takes two samples, it'll go through the range here and do the first sample, and it'll pick, let's say, 448, Mr. Humphreys. Then it'll go and do another sampling, and it doesn't recall the last sampling that it took. It doesn't have a memory, so it could choose 448 again, Mr. Humphreys. So keep that in mind. In any case, after I choose the number of samplings that I want, I can go ahead and pick an output range or have a new worksheet. And the PLY just means, hey, do you want to go ahead and give this new worksheet a name? We'll say yes, we'll say it's a group sample. That's it, just go ahead and click OK and boom, there you go. So here's my original database here, and here's the group sample worksheet as we named it, and there are the uh, two numbers. Now, fortunately for me, when it went through the first sampling and it pulled out a number, the second sampling didn't pull out the same number, so keep an eye on that. The problem that I run into here, besides if it doesn't do duplicate samples, is that I don't know what these numbers represent. Now, if you recall, we uh, went over the vertical lookup function, which we can go ahead and look up these numbers within the database here and pull back, let's say, their last names or first names. So to do that, I'll go ahead and, if you haven't watched the vertical lookup training video, I recommend that you do so you know what I'm talking about here. And assuming that you have, I'm going to fly through this, equals VL for my vertical lookup. Hit the tab key. I'm going to answer the arguments here in the syntax. The first one is, what's the lookup value? Well, it's going to be this right here comma, so I can go to the next argument, the table. The table is going to be on sheet 1, and it's going to include, well, besides from the ID, the last and first name, or I can just do ID and last name, that's fine. And then go ahead and hit comma, so I can go to the next argument, the column index. In other words, which column do I want the values to be returned from? Well, not column 1, that's what I'm looking up. I want the last name, so it'll be column 2. Go ahead, and you can see it up here in the formula bar close the parentheses, hit enter, and there's Mr. Humphreys. Then I just need to go down in here in this cell and go ahead and type it again or I can copy and paste it. Again, the problem with copying and pasting is that anytime you copy and paste a function is that it might shift uh, the lookup part of the function down or over depending if you're doing it by columns or rows. For example, if I just come over here and copy and paste it by hovering over the lower right hand corner and click and drag the black cross, the autofill handle down, Notice that right now it's in cell A4 and B10, or the range is A4 through B10. Come back here, we're looking at A4 through B10, right? Okay. So if I go ahead and click and drag and copy and paste it, come down here, it shifted it from A4 to A5, and then from B10 to B11. So it shifted it, so now it's looking in this range, which isn't good because if I had a lot that I was sampling, it would keep shifting down, and eventually we wouldn't be able to well, if the uh, number was 2 and 4, it wouldn't see it, okay? So what we need to do is come back in here, and you want to watch my absolute uh, training video, or the training video on absolutes or constants, because in there when I say when you create your first function, go ahead and choose the cells that you don't want to update or shift when you copy and paste the function, like A4, click before it, hit F4 on the keyboard, it adds the dollar signs, or you can type them in, that's fine. But that just takes longer to click in between them. Click before B10 and hit F4 again to add additional dollar signs. So we've got constants there. Hit Enter. Go ahead and copy and paste it by clicking and dragging the autofill handle down. And you'll see that it's now A4. It's stuck there. It won't shift to A5, A6, A7, and so on. Well, 
as much as we need to copy it down, which we don't. We just have the two. Now, if that feature doesn't work for you, and rightfully so, I mean, if it's pulling up duplicates and it doesn't give you a great random uh, sampling there, I have another option that you may find of interest. You can go ahead and use the RAND function in conjunction with the advanced filter feature. If you haven't watched my advanced filter training video, you want to watch that. And assuming that you have, then I'm just going to go ahead and fly through this. Well, let me explain the RAND function. I'm going to go ahead and hit equals and type in R-A-N-D. And it says here it's going to return a random number greater than or equal to zero and less than one. So we're dealing with decimals. Let me go ahead and hit the tab key, close the function, and say that it's got to be less than 5%. Let me hit enter. So for right now, ignore the faults, but see if this makes sense. If this is going to be my mini criteria database, where I would have the label above and then the criteria down below, and the criteria for the random sample has to be less than 5%, what's less than 5% out of, let's see, 7 employees, it would be about 1. So, having set the criteria, let me come up here on the Data tab to the Sort and Filter group and click on Advanced Filter. Now, it's got all this selected here. Let me go ahead and delete it so we can see what it looks like when I start from scratch. The list range. What is the sampling range that I want to go ahead and pull from? It's going to be this range right here. I don't want just the IDs, but I want their last name and first name so I know who they are and then the uh, criteria range, which includes my mini criteria database. It doesn't just include this cell here that has the function, it's got to include the cell above it. If you don't include the blank cell above it, and leave it blank, then you're going to get erroneous results, so trust me on this one. In any case, then where do I want to copy this to? The results, I can copy it to that cell, click OK, there we go, we've got one. Now if I want to do it again, then I recommend that you go ahead and delete it and type it in again, well, after you delete both the RAND function and also the results. Because if you don't, you're going to get erroneous results, so it's a little bit tedious, I know, unless you create a macro to do all this for you, but again, equals R-E-N-D, tab, close, less than, let's do this time 0.2525%, hit enter, okay? Let's come over here, click on Advanced Filter, now it's got everything here, that I wanted, except I'd need to choose to copy the results to another location again. Well, let me go ahead and delete that and just select that cell and click OK. There we go. You notice how it changed from false to true? See, that's why I have you delete it, because now that it's true, and let's see, 25% of 7 is about 2, and I go ahead and delete this, it changes it to false. It's got its own random thing going, and so if I try to do this again, just by leaving it as is, and do another advanced filter feature and uh, well coming back here and changing it from let's say 0.25 percent to 0.30 it's basically a one-time use because it's changing it's doing something random here that if I change this to 0.50 I may get just one or I may get all seven of them it's a one-time use when you're done using it delete it uh, retype it in again and then go ahead and change it to whatever percent that you want to take a sampling of your data there thanks for watching Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.